Hi, I'm Will. I wanted to make a, a video series on uh, how I converted my wife's 1970 Volkswagen Beetle convertible uh, over to fuel injection. Um, we built a oversized engine. We built a 2054 um, engine for this, and I just always liked fuel injection. Um, loved to tinker with things and things like that. So. Um, I found a really cool project called Speed Uno that is a fuel injection system based on the Arduino uh, Mega 2560. Um, really pretty simple board. They're all over the place. Um, lots of documentation on the board and things like that out there. But to be able to run fuel injection from something so simple seemed exciting to me. So um, from there, I... Uh, found a board. Um, this is basically like a daughter board that plugs in to the um, Mega that gives you all the connections to the rest of the system. Now I ordered what's called the NO2C board and I'll have some links and stuff below, uh, below for places I ordered things from. None of this is sponsored. Um, I just wanted to make a video of the process that I went through and, and give some information because when I found this board and started putting this board together myself, I, I had a hard time finding any like videos on how it was put together, how it was made. So just trying to help the community out that's that's helped me so much. Um, basically, um, you'll get, if you order the same kit that I did, you get the printed circuit board and bags and bags and bags of components, um, as you can see here. And, I'm going to kind of speed up the process, but I thought I would get this out, lay it all out here on the table, start soldering it up, and uh, see how everything goes. One of the first things we're going to do is open up the box and take out all the components here. So first we have the PCB. They sent us some stickers to put on. Um, I'm just going to kind of dump this out here because we've got a lot of stuff going on here. So everything is in individual bags and labeled. It's really nice. So, you know, this gives us that this is the resistor network and it's in RN5 and RN2. So for all of these little packages, as you look on the board, there's going to be different places that are labeled and they'll be labeled with say RN5, RN2. And that's where each of these little bags of components goes. So I'm ashamed to admit it. The, First time I got one of these, I spent a lot of time trying to figure things out before I realized that, hey, it's right there on the package. So, um, lots and lots of materials here. So, I'm not going to go through each individual bag and where each one goes, but I thought I would maybe just do some overall steps of putting some of this stuff together. So, um, I'm going to separate this stuff out, find, um, I found it best putting the, the smaller components, the components that are more flat to the board on first. So small resistors, diodes, things that are going to be really flat to the board. That's step one. You can put them through the board, flip it over, solder the backside, snip the extra leads off, flip it back over, put the next ones in. If you put in the really tall components first, then there's not a good way to hold some of the smaller components on the other side. Um, after you've got those tall ones in. So that's my process. Okay, so now I've kind of broken this all up. Um, I basically have resistors and diodes in this pile over here. I have capacitors, LEDs, resistor trees over here, or resistor networks, and then some of the ICs and the driver components over here. So I'm gonna start with um, I found bag R1246 and here on the board we have R1426 so these four resistors are going to go right here on this section of the board so let's just do that. Take the papers off. Resistors don't care polarity-wise, so we just 
install them. I try to make them nice and centered that I can. And then I fold the back side over a bit just to hold them in place. We'll go ahead and install all four of these guys. Pin those leads. Grab the other two here. talking to myself here. I do that a lot as I work. Even now I've got an audience, so I guess I'm not technically talking to myself. I'm talking to all of you. Both of you. One of you. Whoever might be there. Alright, so we got that pretty well laid out. Straighten these legs out. And this is what I was talking about. Those oh, those are really flat to the board. If I flip it over here and lay it down, That'll hold those in place. Grab my soldering iron and a little bit of solder here. And just come in and solder these down. And that's it. And then we'll come back in here with some nice flush edge snips and snip off all these tails and that's the first four then we repeat that process for the rest of the components that are laying here now that I have most all of the resistors installed we're going to get to some other components the diodes now one of the clear things with diodes they only allow flow one way so these are going to matter which way that they're installed um, so the this is d1 and d2 so we're going to find d1 and d2 on the board d1 and d2 are located right here now you'll notice that on the board there is a stripe and that should line up with the stripe on the diode so on the diode there's a white end and the rest is black on the board there's a white end and the rest is open so we're going to just open this up and make sure that we install these to match the board D1 and D2 solder these into place and then we'll continue through the rest of the okay and now that we have all the diodes installed we've installed most of the capacitors you'll find that some of the capacitors for example this C7 are polarized and while it may not be quite as clear as it was with the diodes um, the diodes have the stripe and, and they're silk screened on the board. Similarly with the capacitors, um, C4, so we find C4 up in this corner. It has a plus on the square pad. Now the other thing to note is with these capacitors, the longer leg is the positive side. So make sure you put that positive longer leg in there when you solder those in. Those are directional. but in this particular kit, only these two larger um, capacitors are um, polarized. Everything else, or all the rest of the capacitors, uh, doesn't matter. They can go either direction. Okay, when it comes to the ICs, we have IC1 here. You'll notice that there's a notch on one end of the IC 
and there's a notch a silk screen on the board you just want to make sure that those line up when you put them in now for the output transistors um, MOSFETs you'll see that the board is marked with the direction they're pretty self-explanatory the heat sink drawing and we'll just install these six okay so that's the bulk of the assembly um, we have all the components now soldered to the board um, I didn't film the header pins they're just solder the header pins in place um, solder the mass the uh, map sensor on manifold absolute pressure um, and that's about it so to complete it it's like I said in the beginning it's a, a daughter board that plugs into an Arduino so take the Arduino line up the pins it plugs right together um, another couple accessories that my installation is going to need so I have a dual signal converter because I'm, I'm going to be using a, a variable reluctance type crank trigger so you can purchase these on the same site as the NO2C board it uh, will plug in directly to this pin header here and then the other thing that I'm going to be using is uh, a stepper motor control for idle and so I got the stepper driver here it plugs in to this pin header and that's pretty much the completed board now I still have to wire this connector so in the center of the board there's a connector and I purchased through um, Amazon some of these uh, weatherproof connectors and I pulled a 3d printed case from Thingiverse uh, made a little bit of a design modification made it a little bit longer added a, a slot here at the end for the connector to slide into the board will fit right in there so I just need to pin those two together and we'll have the, the ECU done and we'll be able to move on to some of the other parts. So let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully it's helpful. I'm gonna keep on moving down the line uh, with the rest of the build. So uh, let me know if you got any questions. Um, hopefully you guys are interested in something like this. I was gonna try and do videos on the whole process, how I mounted things like crank sensors, how I mounted the injectors on this engine um, I converted the uh, carburetor that we had to just a throttle body added a uh, uh, throttle position sensor things like that so uh, hopefully as this goes along it's useful thanks